right. I'm doing the intro last, uh, just so I could tell you how this went. But anyway, today we are doing a video on a 2017 Polaris Ranger 900 XP. Uh, the wife and I bought this brand new back in 2017. Uh, done some quick add-ons right away, which was uh, finished out the bars going around the headlights on both sides. Uh, installed the winch. Installed the um, rock sliders along with a rear bumper. Back here. You know, something pretty nice. couple lights in. It's got a hooks and stuff. You've got a place to mount another winch down here if you wanted or whatever. Um, anyway... Uh, we're going to do some upgrades for this for the winter time. So uh, the first upgrade that we're doing is we're going to install the heater. Yes, as you can see, I've already got the two vents in up here because the work is already done. And I'm just giving you guys a little update on what you are getting into. Don't expect to do this within a day or I'm sorry. Don't expect to do this in a couple hours. Make sure that you have at least a full day to work on this project. Uh, don't expect to go riding, you know, in a couple hours or come home and only have a couple hours before you have to go to bed and then, uh, start riding, uh, the next morning. Cause that's not going to happen. You need a full day, especially if you're, uh, inexperienced, uh, in doing something like this and have never done it before. Um, I've got about a day's worth of work in it. This is the first machine that I've done this to, uh, the firestorm, um, unit will go through it. Uh, I'll tell you, you know, tell you what came in the kit. You'll see everything in the video, the whole nine yards. So keep it short and sweet. This is a long video. So, uh, hopefully you guys enjoy it. Hopefully you got, there we go. Now you guys can see that. And as far as the hours, 189 and a half hours is what's on the machine. So, um, I want to show you this kit that we ended up getting as far as the, uh, 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 furnace you know as far as the uh, heater i was very impressed with this when i opened it up and i'm trying to keep this short and sweet because i know this video is going to be kind of long um i was very impressed when i opened this machine or when i opened this kit up uh several different things here really impressed me um you know you got all of your bracketry everything seems pretty organized here and and laid out but they also went the extra step and sent you the mandrel with the bit, the pilot bit, along with two hole saws, okay, that was included in the kit, along with a, uh, uh, looks like a water hose adapter for the house, water hose adapter, I'm not sure what we're going to use this for yet, but they sent it anyway. Um, the thing that really turned me on about this is this adapter right here, this goes uh, back by your thermostat, and what this does is this is the bypass, which actually gives you straight heat as soon as the uh, engine is warming up. As soon as the machine's warming up, you're going to get direct heat. Uh, that way you're not uh, getting just faint heat. You're getting direct heat all the time. So that was a big uh, turn on for me. Uh, one thing that I did not expect to come in this kit was this switch. This uh, Firestorm uh, furnace or uh, keep calling furnace, but heater is a three stage, you know, it's got three speeds on the fan motor and it's an automotive style uh, switch plate. Okay. Three speeds, very easy to tell what, you know, what speed you're on, all that stuff. I'm really impressed with that. Another thing that I like that came with this kit is here's the knob for it, but uh, is this right here. This is a shutoff valve. Um, for like the summertime when you don't need that heater and you want to shut off uh, the hot fluid coming up to the furnace. That way you're not getting any kind of heat out of this during the summertime. Very easy to turn on, turn off. It came with everything that you need. Um, the only parts that I saw that did not come in this kit that was supposed to, and I'm going to give them a call. These are called unicoils right here unicoil um, what these are for is this goes over the 5 8 radiator hose which you know I mean you see it they sent it um, 5 8 radiator hose uh, to keep a nice curvature to uh, less uh, it, it basically prevents it from kinking so 
we're going to install the kit anyway. And if I see an issue, I'll just run to the parts store and get them. Um, you know, they're not very much money. You know, I, I'll go down and get them. No problem. The vents that it come with, I'm very impressed with these. These are the same style vents, roughly, that you would get in uh, like a, uh, uh, a dozer, you know, some heavy machinery now that's out. Uh, a dozer, you know, track hoe, loader, whatever. That's what these vents are kind of designed for. And I know for a fact from running that equipment that these vents actually do real well. So without further ado, we want to go ahead and get started. Uh, I've been talking for six and a half minutes, so let's get to it and uh, start working on this thing. All right, so the first thing that you've got to do in the instructions that they sent is you want to move the dash. And by moving the top part of the dash, you've got either four clips, those push-pull bands. you got one here, one on the other side, and typically there's two here. These are actually bolts here on my machine to accept the uh, half glass that goes in here or whatever. That's what came with the machine was a half glass. It's just not on here right now. So these are 14 mils. Remove those, pull the clips, take the dash out. Body tool. Okay, this is a body panel tool. This is what I use to pop these clips out. Very easy to do. You don't mark them up. There's one. There's two. Set these aside and we'll pull the dash. Next, remove the hood. Okay, after you remove the hood, you're going to remove this tunnel here, okay? There's four of these plastic clips. You got two here and one on each side down here, one on that side, one on this side. Those need to be removed. After you get the clips removed, Grab all the tunnel and remove the tunnel. What that does is that allows you to get in here to be able to reroute or to be able to route your uh, radiator hoses from your heater back to the engine. All right, so the next step in the destructions, it says to uh, get your template two and three, uh, number two, number three, and lay it on the dash and go ahead and cut your uh, cut your holes. The templates are actually at the back of your destructions, back here. These are the templates. So what you do is you just cut these out, tape them in place where they need to be, and set up your drill and drill your holes. So that's what we're going to do. Uh, just got off the phone with a buddy of mine. Uh, I've, he's installed several of these heaters. And he said none of the kits that he has dealt with in the past has came with those unicoils. So we'll just see what happens. Well, if I think we need them, we'll go get them. If not, um, you know, we won't put them in. But I'll let you know what we figure out. So I'm going to cut these. We'll get them put on the dash, and we'll go ahead and get those cut. All right, so this is the top of the dash, and I cut out the, uh, the two templates, uh, the left and the right side template. Got those taped in. I recommend using uh, uh, automotive style tape or something, uh, a painter style tape. That way you're not leaving any residue on your dash and dust won't stick to it or whatever after you pull it. Um, there's no sticky stuff left on your dash. Uh, what you got to do or what I'm going to do is you have to mark the center hole on each side uh, of the template here. One here, one over here where you're going to be drilling. And instead of drilling through the paper, um, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to use a pick. I'm going to mark a spot right in the center of each side. I'll pull these templates off and then we'll drill it and uh, this, this step will be done. So just take you a pick, put it directly in the center. You want to hold the back side and kind of make sure you get a good dimple, a good mark in the plastic. We'll do the same thing over here. 
it right in the center of that template. Make you a dimple. Pull the template off. This way, if you mess up a little bit, you can uh, might be able to save it and not have to guess where you need to put it. Right there's my dimple. That's where I'll put the mandrel bit in when I start drilling. So we'll just actually just leave this off to the side, hanging down, and we'll flip the template up and look at it after I'm done. Take the uh, mandrel that they sent with you, the two inch hole saw bit, screw that on, look down in the center, find your center ports, you screw this down which runs the mandrel uh, lining tool in, that way that can't move, take your drill, and now you're ready to drill. There's one. Go ahead and clean up your edges as well. And right there you can see the hole. So we're good. Flip her around, we'll do the other side. Tape that back down. And there she is. All right, so the next step, I got these holes cleaned up. I just took a uh, razor knife and uh, cleaned up the edges real nice. Uh, got all the burrs off of it. Uh, next step, we're going to take two of the defrost, well, we'll take two of these um, vents and we'll stick them down in the hole and make sure they clip in all the way. <clears throat> you may have to use a little bit of force to get them to clip in, but they will clip in. Like that. Make sure they're down all the way, all the way around. And it doesn't matter because these are these are adjustable. You can you can spin these around um, any, any way you need them to go. So as you can see, they do spin after they're in there. So put that one back in its spot. There we go. That way that closes. <clears throat> Put both of these in. And you want to make sure that you got some kind of firm piece on the back, you know, like your hand where you're pushing at. That way you don't bend or, uh, you know, put a white mark in the plastic. Um, okay, that one's in as well. So those are installed. Now, flip your panel over. And in this kit, it actually came with three of these, two which are not cut like this one is. Uh, this one here, they just made a cut, made it easy where it needs to be cut and put into place. So just take a pair of snips, get in here at the wire, snip the wire like that. And we are going to install Okay, these are both the same size, so it doesn't matter. We're going to install both of these on here. It's going to be kind of a pain to get over the uh, uh, 
lip here as well. They also recommend um, snipping the wire to help get it over top. I'm going to try to do it without. If we do need to snip it, we will. But uh, I don't want to have any cuts back in here. So I'll get these installed. We'll get it zip tied on and move on to the next step. So the next step, we're going to be under the hood, all right? On the 17 model, you have a um, power source here, which is hot ground auxiliary, okay? There's no wires going to the hot or the ground. Uh, evidently, I ended up robbing those and brought them up here to my winch. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to tie into the winch. The only thing that we need is the ground from the winch and then the other wire is going to get hooked down here to the power wire or to the auxiliary i'm sorry down here to the auxiliary post okay this is for the winch itself that's i haven't done anything yet in here yet um, but we're going to do this step kind of backwards what they want you to do is go ahead and hook up uh, the uh, black wire the ground and the auxiliary and run it on through uh, your hole here to go inside your dash and i'm not going to do that yet this is going to be backwards so and i'll show you why the reason for that is this is actually going to be under the dash these sides of the wire and i don't want anything touching you can unhook your battery and do it that way but i'm lazy and i'm not unhooking my battery so as of right now we are going to move to this step where we're actually going to start plugging this stuff into the connector. And after it's in the connector, that's when I'll hook these wires up out here. Okay. So we're just swapping the step. That's it. Plus I have to get a couple, I got to find a couple, uh, um, eyelets to go on these posts, uh, as well. That did not come in the kit. So let's get to that and make that happen. Okay, so in the kit, you're gonna get this black connector. It's got five pin ports in it. And uh, this is where all your wiring is gonna get connected into. Uh, your single, well, all except for your black single. You're gonna use your red single, and then you're gonna use the wiring that is in the loom here like this, okay? These wires will get uh, used as of right now. So, on the back side here, just like that, you can see those little tabs in there. That's what this locks into. So if you put it in the wrong spot, it's not that difficult to get out. You just need a straight pick like, where's the camera? You need a straight pick like that there. Focus. There you go. Straight pick like that. And on the other side, there's this little tab right here that uh, you will push down and then the wire will pop back out. So you know what, let's just show you how that is. So this needs to go in this terminal here. You'll hear it click just like that. Can't pull the wire out, okay? Let's say that's in the wrong spot. You take your pick, go on the front side at the top, slide your pick in, and that'll bend that tab down a little bit to where, well, let's try it again. That'll bend that tab down to where you can pull the wire out, okay? Once you get the wire out, it's no big deal. You just take your pick and pry back up on that little metal tab. That way it'll click in in the correct hole and lock into place, just like that, okay? So, they've got a nice diagram here, um, so we can get this clipped in. So, looking at the diagram, this wire needs to go on the bottom left-hand side. If you don't hear said click, pull the wire back out, rotate it 180 degrees, and slide it back in. Okay? 
now we have just above that is in the conducted uh, or the conductor wire which they call this conductor wire because it is in loom you take the yellow wire just above that one clip that one in make sure you hear the click that way you know it's locked in above that is all the way up top here is the red wire make sure you hear the click and then the orange wire goes directly across from the yellow wire this one here does not get used so we'll get this fed through we'll go ahead and hook up the power because I'm lazy and didn't want to unhook the battery we'll go ahead and hook up the auxiliary side and as far as the ground goes that's okay we can go ahead and hook up the uh, ground side I just need to get some eyelets for these two wires and we'll be good to go all right so um, I figured this was going to be metric but uh, the only thing that's metric as of right now is uh, the ground for my winch okay this uh, these the bus port back here for your uh, power auxiliary or power ground and auxiliary that's actually a 3 8 so it's a standard size uh, to remove that figured I might let you guys know that you, it's one thing you don't want to do is strip that stuff out so let's go ahead and pull the ground side off <clears throat> real simple we're just going to pull the ground side off take the ground wire and install the ground wire and you want to make sure it's angled so it's not going to be in the way of course if you mount them down here uh, you won't have as much issue as I, I'm going to have uh, trying to make sure it's out of the way for future things going in here more than likely what I'll do is I'll end up putting these back where they need to go and um, Making a small power wire and a small ground wire to come up here so to the winch box Right now just trying to get this grommet back on here Just like that Okay, ground wire is hooked up. Now we'll hook up the auxiliary. And again, that's three eighths back here. Take all this, tuck it right through where the grommet's supposed to be. This unit did not have a grommet. And we're just going to address that right there. Move on to the next step. Okay, on this next step, you need to take this piece right here, the one that has the selector on it. On the back side, there's these two little nubs here. You got to cut those off, okay? Get them flush. I've got, I'm going to use a razor knife. We'll get those cut off and move on to what we need to do here. Hopefully, this will cut them nicely or easily. Now that the nubs are cut off as you see they're cut off you need to take this position it right up here this is the edge that they're talking about okay not over here but right up here um, you got to get it as close as you can to that edge center it up okay Let's see if we can get some light on this maybe that'll help so you got to get it over to the edge as far as it'll go okay get it centered up up and down right up against that edge and once you find that spot you need to make a mark Let's see if I can get this light set up here once you get it set where you want it 
you need to take and mark the center of the hole here, okay? This hole right here. So again, I'm using my pick and I'm gonna mark roughly the center of where I want this. Make sure we're square here. Looking good. And I'm just gonna use some force, put a dimple in there. You can see the dimple right there. I'm gonna check it before I drill it to make sure everything looks right. Make sure it looks centered, which I'm actually off just a little bit. Okay, maybe. Really take your time on this because this is a very, very important part of this. That actually looks pretty good. So we can leave that dimple alone. That's right where I want it, right there. We are going to take a 7 16 drill bit and we are gonna drill right at that dimple. Okay. Just like that, okay? And I'll show you the reason why you wanna make sure it's all the way up against there. So this is looking from the outside in at your dash, looking down here, right there is the hole that I just drilled, okay? Over on this side, you have all the reinforcement for your glove box. For your switch to set in said spot, right here at the hole on the inside of your dash, you wanna make sure you've got enough room for your switch not to uh, interfere with any part of it. So they recommend that you take that just the way I did, put it all the way over, and drill your hole. So we're gonna go ahead and install the switch and get that part plugged together. Okay, so this is everything that you should have in your kit uh, for this step. They want you to do away with this washer right here, okay? So in the instructions it says, do not use it. So we're down to the switch, the nut, the knob, and the backing plate, okay? That's what we have left. That's what we're gonna install. We'll go ahead and plug the wire into the switch, run it through the dash, and have this piece right here stuck outside the dash. We'll get everything set up and move on to the next step. All right, so you take the plug that we put together and you plug it into the switch. You want it firmly plugged in like that. That's as far as it'll go. From the inside of the dash, you want to make sure you don't catch any wires. And take the switch, slide it right in the hole. You, we just missed. Just missed that uh, glove box. So we're right in the right place. Then you take this piece, slide it on here. There we go. Once that slid on there, that's got a little notch on it, a little half moon. You, you can adjust where you want your display for your on off and all that good stuff, your speed selector. And then you take this nut. Put that nut on there. And with this switch here in this kit, it takes a 14 millimeter. Once you figure out exactly where you want that to set, 
take your 14 millimeter socket and tighten that up. Just like that. Once you got her set, tightened up, take your knob, slide your knob on. Just like that. Perfect. Okay, so we are in the passenger side floorboard. This is going to take template number one. Um, there's a dimple right here already molded in the plastic. That dimple stays. This is how you line it up. Again, it's with tape, all that good stuff. These, I get my finger in there. Where you at, finger? Wow, it's not even picking it up. <clears throat> anyway, you have two quarter inch holes there. That hole there is going to be the inch and a quarter uh, hole saw. That's gonna be the uh, white hole saw bit that came in the kit uh, with mine. And you've got two quarter inch holes up top there. Um, I'll show you the aftermath. I'll get these marked out and uh, go ahead and get these cut. There's just not enough room in here. As of right now, it doesn't say anything about removing the dash per se. This part, because that's where it's at. It's right under there. You can see the tape and it's up underneath the dash. So I'll see if I can get my drill in there. Um, hopefully I can and I won't have to move the dash. So uh, I'll drill these and show you the aftermath. So I ended up getting these holes drilled. Uh, I also drilled the two up top underneath the dash as well. Uh, I was uh, fortunately able to do this with an angle or an angle drill. Um, so the dash wasn't in my way per se. Um, if you do not have an angle drill or a short 5 16 drill bit, well actually if you don't have an angle drill, you're not gonna be able to do the large hole or the small holes as well um, without removing the front of the dash here. I was able to do it. It didn't say anything in the instructions about moving said dash front, but you know, prepare yourself for that. You'll, you'll have to remove the dash. Um, the next step is to drill this other hole here with the uh, inch and a quarter hole saw. And this one here in particular, you really have to pay attention uh, on where this uh, paper is. Uh, their angle is like this in the book with a tape right at uh, the lower corner of the paper there. We'll walk over here and I'll show you. This here, it doesn't really show you exactly where you need to be. Um, and it doesn't say where you exactly have to be at, but you really have to pay attention to this step because on this side of the wheel well, this is on the passenger side looking toward the back up here in the frame. There's a little cutout of the metal right, right here. Okay. That's just plastic and that's where that has to go. Um, that's where that drill bit's going to be. So we do have wires here in the way. I got to snip this uh, zip tie here so the wires are out of the way and I can drill this hole and <coughs> get back in here so you can see exactly where I set the paper to make it match for this kit. So I've got the edge of the template directly with the edge of the doghouse cover here, okay, where the uh, tunnel goes. So that's where you want to be. Make sure it's all the way down and you should not hit any metal back here. I'll get this drilled. We'll check it out. I've already got my dot made or my uh, center punch spot made here to uh, Go ahead and uh, drill that out. We'll get that drilled out and I'll show you what it looks like. Okay, so that's that hole right here. And you can see, you can see the metal outline. 
we just missed that so that's exactly where you want the hole if you set the template up exactly how I had it you won't have any problems as far as hitting the structural steel of the uh, cage and uh, everything should really actually be smooth sailing from here as far as install from this point uh, with that so uh, next step we're going to install that grommet and the grommet for the big hole there and uh, move on to the next step okay so in the kit you get two rubber washers like this these are grommets so we're going to install one of those just above the tunnel drive shaft tunnel just like that and then we're going to take some radiator hose that 5 8 hose and we're going to bring in at least 34 inches through here leave it dangle and then we're going to run the other right down this tunnel here and stay right with these lines so let's get that done So this is the excess hose that I've got left. Everything's ran. These are your um, coolant uh, lines, factory coolant lines here and here. They want you to run this directly with that, just like that. Well, I don't know if it's going to be off to the side eventually, but that's where they want you to run it. Um, one of those, uh, what were they called? <clears throat> One of those unicoils that we are missing is supposed to go in this place. I spoke with a buddy of mine. I think I said this already, but he said that he's installed several and has never had a kit come with them. But basically what it does, you can see the new hose there. That unicoil just keeps that hose, uh, prevents it from getting kinked. Um, I don't see where it's going to be an issue leaving it the way it is without it uh, so that's what I'm gonna do I recommend that you follow protocol whatever it calls for but uh, we run it through the tunnel here followed the coolant lines back through the frame you know down through there you really gotta reach around and you know select a path for it but I've got it says leave six inches to a foot above or longer than what you need for future adjustments. You want to get back to the back side of the engine where these two, get you up here, where these two black uh, ports are, you know, off the back of the engine. The thermostat housing is directly below that in between. That right there is the thermostat housing. So we've got plenty of hose back here. We're going to move on to the next step and get this thing done. All right, so the next step I don't want you to do is take this hose that is ran, that we just ran in the, uh, the uh, tunnel here. And I want you to cut the hose. Doesn't matter, I guess, kind of where you cut it. But I don't like the idea of how they want to set this. I mean, I guess it would be okay. What they want you to do is just basically cut the hose, install this fitting, and cover this knob up with the tower, or with the tunnel cover. Um, there's no bolts 
that came with the kit to go in, you know, to mount this anywhere. So this is just going to be kind of in there dangling around. This is a nice switch, I think. And I'm not sure if I want to mount it off to the side, you know, to make it easy access to where I don't have to uh, remove the tunnel twice a year um, to, uh, to turn this on and off. So I'm kind of figuring out where I might want it to where it won't affect anything if I decided to do that later. Because right now we're just going to do it the way that they want. And, you know, if I, got a, if I got a third person with me, I don't want them kicking it, so I don't want it here in the center. Um, not sure if I want it up high. Maybe I could set it down back here. That way it's kind of off to the side. And then later on I'll drill a hole and this will just be there. Or do I want it maybe up here? I got to think about that. So that's where we're at now. This is what's getting installed, but uh, I'm going to put it somewhere else other than directly here in the middle like they said. I went through the uh, instructions and it doesn't show or say anything about mounting this switch on, or yeah, this uh, shutoff um, flow switch uh, to the tower to where this knob is easily accessible. So I think later on in life, I'm going to make it easier, easier to access. So I'll probably just stick this back here. I think I'll stick this back here. I'm going to cut it toward, toward the seat uh, more than in the middle. And we'll get it installed. So I think that's what we're going to do. That looks good there. So we'll just cut it. Uh, where are we going to cut it? Okay. Make sure you got a good pair of shears to cut rubber doing this. Or a razor knife. Okay. Get that cut. I'm going to take two hose clamps. Slide one on each side where you just cut it. like so and we will install the valve now this valve does have a flow there's an arrow on the bottom of it. it shows you which way it goes so you want the arrow pointing toward the front of the vehicle Okay, now that those are on, let's tighten down your clamps. Those are tight. Those are in there. And the tunnel's ready to go back on. I do believe I will be mounting that switch on the outside. But like I said, for right now, we're just going to do it this way. Make sure all your wires are in there and you don't get anything pinched. Oh, see? That switch is in the way. See? Switch is in the way. So maybe if I turn it to the side.
Maybe that won't be too bad there. Let's try that. Much better. Make sure it's on as well. And it is. Okay. Put your pins back in. Alright, once those are all in, we move on to the next step. Alright, so I installed the second grommet. The one that goes over here against the footwell here in the firewall. Went ahead and uh, done that and I ran this uh, the remaining of the hose through it. I left uh, some excess out here. I have not cut this hose yet. That's what they want you to do. But I'm going to make sure that we've got a good, nice fit once we put the heater in here. Um, you know, measure once or measure twice, cut once kind of thing. So I don't want to be caught with my pants down with that. So I just left that in that area. Um, there is the remaining of the hose. I just got it coiled up on the tire. It's all still connected. So next we are going to take uh, this plate right here and we are going to install these two vents, this one and this one. And then we're gonna install the two remaining lines and go ahead and get this bolted in place. So let's get that done. I'll show you the aftermath of it uh, after I get everything hooked up. All right. Must have been a Friday or a Monday when these uh, plates were made. Um, they drilled the holes too big in the plate for this to actually lock into place the vent itself. As you can see, I can... It's, it's too big. This thing will slip right out. It shouldn't gap out like that. It should actually lock in like it did with uh, the other uh, when we put them on the dash. So I'm gonna give them a call and have them send me a good plate and I'll swap this out whenever I get it. But as far as right now, we are going to finish the install for the heater. So I've got these in, you know, I really want them to clip in because I could turn this several different times and I'm twisting the hose. Uh, that should actually lock in place and just this part here twist. The back side that's locked in should not. So I definitely want another plate, whether I've got to make it myself or get them to send it to me. They should honor it and send it to me. If not, I'll let you know, but that's the plan. But we're going to go ahead and install this plate under the dash and get this piece taken care of. Okay, I'm going to try to video doing this, but I might not be able to. So we're going to mount the under dash um, vents right now. Get this light kind of moved out of the way. Trying to keep the light on it so you guys can see it, plus trying to keep the camera in a good spot so you guys can also see as well. This is gonna require a quarter inch drill bit. <clears throat> Typically you would mark this. I'm just going to eyeball it to where I want it. And I'm going to drill one hole. Should have marked it. Yeah, that marked it. Oh, yeah. Okay, I just drilled this hole here. This is on the bottom side of the dash, right in the center above the um, tunnel that we just installed. So I drilled one hole. I'm going to take one of the uh, bolts that came with the kit. We'll get it started in that hole. Kind of snugged up there a little bit. Okay, now I'll drill the other and you know, I'll drill this hole and then this hole. We'll get the bolts back in. You guys can see what I did and we'll go from there. Okay, so this is what it looks like. I drilled those four hole or those three holes right there. And the vents are installed. 
And as I said before, these are turnable to where you can angle them, you know, whatever direction. So I can even have it come blowing straight up this way if I wanted. Uh, so those are in there nice. We can have directly on our feet if we want or on our legs, however. And uh, so that step's done. Let's move on to the next one. Next step is putting the dash back in, the top part of the dash. And what they want you to do is route this, these hoses, to where they go to the passenger side floorboard of the machine. So you want to make sure that you've got a good straight area for these to drop down through, a good clean area. You do not want these kinked in any which way, shape, or form because that will restrict the airflow. So find the best route and loop those down to the passenger side floorboard of the unit. Should just kind of flow free. That way you don't have any kinks. And then you have to put your dash back in. See what I'm doing here. And at this point, as far as the dash goes, I am not going to put the dash all the way back together. We're just going to make like make believe that it's back together because I have another install on this for another video that we are going to do. So we'll just kind of leave that. Kind of like that, I guess. But at this point, what you definitely do is go ahead and reinstall your whole dash, clip it in a whole nine yards, and uh, you know you would be done at, at, on the top at this point. But that's pretty much it right there. Your dash is in. Once you put your clips in across here, everything's good. Make sure that uh, you can turn these. Uh, you know. Make sure that's all good, you know. I can have it facing my face or even toward the window, however. So all that is good. And uh, we'll move on to the next step, see what it wants us to do. Okay, so next we are going to put the mounting bracket onto the heater. So in the, in the picture, as you can see, um, it shows you the inlet and outlet uh, port for the lines. Shows you how the bracket goes. The longer port points away from those line uh, inlets. So that's how we need to mount it. Because as you can see on the mounting bracket, you have holes closer to one side versus the other. So you want to make sure that that's correct. And by doing so, make sure the mounting bracket is on correctly as well. You know, flip the right way. Um, these are uh, 530 seconds Allen heads that uh, were sent with the kit. Uh, to be installed at this point they are flush mount to the bracket because that bracket will uh, get uh, bolted right to the firewall so you don't want anything interfering with it so so far so good this has been a pretty good kit um, there is a few things that I'd like to see them change on it um, but you know as far as the money goes, so far, so good. I'm pretty happy with it. The other stuff I can deal with myself. Just like that, that's done. Next step, uh, attach the two inch duct work. Uh, hoses coming from the vents <clears throat> to the vent ports near the firewall. Well, it didn't even say anything about mounting this thing. Does this thing get mounted yet? Okay, well, I guess it just wants us to go ahead and uh, uh, put the vents on here first. So let's get that done. Okay, so got a lot done here. Um, got all the vents put on and got the, uh, turn the light on here. Got the uh, unit mounted up underneath the dash. This is really nice. This is all up underneath the dash. Really can't see anything. Um, you know, standing outside the machine or anything. Um, this hose closest to the dash, this is where you hook 
the one uh, hose that comes out of the um, tunnel, okay? That's where this one gets hooked up to. It gets hooked closest to the dash. The one closest to the firewall gets hooked up to the one closest to the firewall. Now the way to route this, you want to make sure, I'm glad that I didn't cut it because I ended up using a little bit more than 34 inches on this line. Like it said, it said to just cut it at 34 inches and you'll be good. But I ended up routing it right up in between here, in between, wrapped it up around the top, made sure it had a great loop in it and hooked it in so there's no kinks. Same way with here, no kinks in here as, as well. So this is all good and mounted and ready for the next step, which I believe we are going to be wiring in the plug for the switch. So let me look at the uh, instructions. We'll get back with you. All right, so in the kit, it comes with um, this white connector here. Uh, same way, it's just the push, uh, push dial in uh, or push the wires in and to lock in, which are the wires that we brought in from underneath the hood. That's where these four wires are. You've got the ground, and then, of course, your switch wires here. Um, want to make sure you do this right. There's a, little, there's a little tab right here on the top. Looks just like that. Make sure that's facing up. And then you've just got orange, black, red, and yellow. And that's what we're going to do now. Um, I'll get that done, and we'll get it hooked up and go from there. On a side note, make sure you pull these black caps out of the uh, heater core before you put the hose on. Make sure these are out. I almost forgot to tell you that. Okay, so at this point, now that uh, we should have power down here at the heater, which is underneath, what you want to do at this point is go ahead and hook up your battery. If you disconnected it, go ahead and hook it back up. You come up here, turn the key on, and then you're going to check your speeds just to verify that everything works okay that all works you can also check the flow you know that's that's blowing nicely there that one's blowing nicely so i know i don't have any any problems there that one's blowing and that one's blowing nice okay so, as far as the ducting, all the ducting's good, and uh, we don't have any restrictions that I feel. So, at this point, after you've verified all that, you turn the key back off, disconnect your battery again, because the destructions say so. So, next, it looks like we're going to be working up by the radiator, and looks like we're going to be cutting the uh, existing, one of the existing radiator hoses and adding... A fitting so let's go do that okay before we go uh, cutting into water the uh, radiator hose we need to make sure that this system's bled so you're going to take the uh, hose nozzle that they sent with you the adapter for the garden hose you're going to screw it on there onto the garden hose you're going to take the hose that you had left over I went ahead and cut this hose there was actually another couple feet left on it I went ahead and cut it um, you don't want to cut this one too short up here by the firewall because this is what connects to your radiator hose up by the radiator on the passenger side. You take this, shove it inside that hose, okay? Let that set there. You don't have to put a clamp on it because it's not going to get any pressure. Only thing we're doing is working the water out of the system, okay? Then we come back here where the other end of the hose is which i have it just right up here we're going to take it swing it out and set it down into the bucket okay we're going to turn the water on you want this to run for at least a minute so you'll probably need a couple buckets to swap this out i'm going to grab a couple more buckets get the water turned on and let this run for a minute all right, so what you want to do is you want to make sure that there's no air in this whatsoever. You want it to run at least 30 or 60 seconds, no less than that. I'm going to let mine run longer just to reassure that I get enough air out of it or make sure that there is no air in the system. So I'll let this run for a few minutes before I shut the water off. 
make sure you got a couple of buckets to swap out. That way you don't have to turn anything off if you're doing this, if you're doing this in in a building. Unfortunately, my second bucket's got a hole in it. So I gotta get this one dumped so we can swap back around. All right, next thing that we're gonna do is we're actually gonna deal with this bottom radiator hose. It is on the passenger side at the radiator, of course. And right here in this flat spot here, we're gonna make a cut right in the middle of that. Well, at least the light's still on there. We're gonna make a cut right in the middle of that and we're gonna put our Y pipe in there. I'll grab it and show you exactly what way it's gonna go. Um, just because I'm not going to be able to show you me actually doing this. So with your Y pipe, there's your Y pipe, right? Okay. This is going to go right in the center where I said we're going to cut. Okay. Your radiator hose is going to go on this side and this side. You're going to put the two larger clamps, one on each side, clamp it down, make sure this is turned uh, facing, make sure the Y part is facing toward the firewall to the passenger side. Okay, and then once this is installed, you're going to take your hose, your existing hose that we just put water in, that comes out of the grommet. We're going to put it over to this Y pipe here. We're going to connect it with the smaller clamp that is in the kit. Uh, once we get that done, I'll show you what it looks like and we'll go from there. Make sure you have something to catch antifreeze. I'm just using, you know, an oil pan, whatever. Um, I'm not using the antifreeze that's coming out of this. So if I, you know, whatever I lose, I'll replace with new stuff. But make sure you have a catch pan because I imagine it, it, you, you're definitely going to get uh, some antifreeze out of this. Okay, so there's the fitting and the uh, hose there. So I've got everything tied back up. That's all done. We are done up front for now. Now it's time to move to the back for the thermostat housing which looks like an interesting ordeal as I'm looking through the page and knowing where everything is there at the, on the machine. So this is where we're at. We're at the thermostat by house in installation. This is the parts kit for it, uh, minus this bolt and this washer. It went right there at that bung. As you can see, there is a hole there, but they filled that hole in. I imagine they probably had issues with that leaking at one time and decided to do away with it. So you need your thermostat bypass housing here with the tube on it, two longer bolts, two lock washers, and a new rubber o-ring gasket. So uh, flip the page here, what does it look like we're doing? Tip the bed to the ranger to gain access to the Engine bay may be necessary to unlatch the beds. That's smart. That's something that I would definitely do is uh, remove the cylinder uh, from the bed to allow the bed to tip the rest of the way up. Uh, then we are going to uh, remove the main intake hose from the air manifold and set aside as shown in figure one. So we're going to take this hose off. It looks like we're just going to get rid of it. Get it out of there for now so we can access everything in there. We'll get that done and go from there. Okay, we're on the driver's side here. I'm going to show you something. Unfortunately, I can't raise the bed up any higher than that because of the rear bumper. It's pretty close. I might get another half inch or so out of it, but that's it. Uh, but if you don't have a rear bumper on it, all you have to do is pull that pin right there on the uh, uh, arm there and the bed will actually go up higher. Uh, and get out of your way, but unfortunately I got to deal with it the way it is no big deal So I'm gonna remove that clamp pull this hose off get it set aside Then I'm going to come around here Onto the passenger side there is a little hose by the way under there that we got to disconnect um, Which is no big deal. It's just a breather hose um, we got to come and remove the clamp off of this pipe and off of this intake pipe here and then ever so slightly pry that away that way we can get to the thermostat housing which sets right down there in between so I'll get that done and show you what it looks like okay so 
we got the air take or the main air intake hose over on that side taken off. We took the bolt at the bottom of this completely out, as you'll see in the uh, instructions if you buy this kit. That bolt was a pain in the butt on this unit to get out, but we got it. And as far as popping this loose here, um, I had to use a pry bar uh, with excessive force and you just stick a pry bar down in here as shown and you pry it toward the back of the machine to pop these out that allows us to have access down to the thermostat easily and uh, we'll get that uh, swapped out so that's what i'm going to do next okay so i ended up getting the uh, thermostat off it's just hanging there the thermostat housing um, i did not remove the thermostat from the housing leaving all that alone uh, very important on how this goes on of course because you've got a smooth face and you have a spade or a, a face with an o-ring and a groove um, reading the description here it says uh, after the coolant stopped draining assemble the bypass valve to the back side of the thermostat the flat face without the machined groove okay that can be a little tricky just to, you know to understand so what they're saying is you have the engine block over here okay the side with the groove and the rubber gasket that comes with the bypass needs to go up against the engine okay and then this side that is machined flat no groove that is where your thermostat housing goes against here all right, and the thermostat gasket that is on the thermostat, it's a rubber ring. Uh, that's what seals up against this machine face. And um, you want to make sure that the bypass tube, which is this, is on the passenger side when you bolt it back up. I'm going to go ahead and do that using the stainless steel hardware that was sent. And uh, I'll get that installed, and we can start putting... Uh, the stuff back air together that uh, I ended up taking off the engine. So just just so, to confirm, um, you know, because like I said, it's just, it's kind of, uh, to me, it's uh, kind of, um, you could almost uh, uh, misunderstand what it's saying there. After the coolant has stopped draining, assemble the bypass valve to the back side of the thermostat, in parentheses, the flat face without the machine groove using, um, the, I think they had a different design to where the thermostat housing actually bolted uh, in a different spot to this and then other um, holes where this actually went through and you had two sets of bolts here instead of just two bolts, you had four um, is the way that I'm reading this. But the new design, if there was a new design, you only have two bolts, so you use the hardware that came with it and do away with these small uh, original thermostat housing bolts and use these nice new stainless steels. Make sure you have lock washers uh, that come with the kit on both of them. And we are gonna snug it down. And then as we're tightening, we're gonna tighten a little bit on each side of the bolts. You know, one bolt will get tightened a little bit, so will the other. That way, everything's kind of uniform, getting sucked down up against the machine. So, I'll get that taken care of and show you what we got. Okay, we just got all this back together. I'm going to show you the best that I can. Um, right here is your thermostat housing. This is the bypass that we just put in, which is right here. That's what it looks like. These are 10 millimeter bolts. Uh, bolt heads instead of eight millimeter um, the problem that I had was uh, basically popping um, your your intake ports out of here out of the boots and putting them back in you really got to make sure that you get them all the way down uh, these should be flush with the uh, ABS plastic um, intake inlets tubes those should be flush on both sides and you have to tighten them down. I did have to rotate that clamp so I could tighten it up this way through the top instead of underneath um, where it was original. I still have to put that tube back on 
and put the bolt in the box underneath, which I'll take care of that. Uh, before you guys do any kind of startup or anything, I suggest that you would go through with uh, zip ties and tie. make sure all your hoses are tied up. Um, you know, that way they don't rub on anything. As you can see, that hose needs to be tucked over that way and tightened up with some zip ties. Uh, you want to go through the whole system that way. Really check it over. Get everything tightened up. I, I would also suggest popping off the... Uh, the uh, tunnel here and putting a couple zip ties under there um, pop your dash off you know it's pretty easy just pop your dash off double check under there make sure everything is good to go as far as nothing rubbing uh, you know deal with your wires tie them up put what put put them in wire loom or whatever a lot of these machines do have a rubber grommet here uh, this one here absolutely did not come with one at all so I'll end up putting some uh, wire loom excuse me I'll end up putting some wire loom on this and getting it taken taken care of got the hiccups but anyway as far as the install we are done um, once I button up those couple things there in the back which is no big deal I'll get those taken care of real quick and then what we need to do is we need to jack up the machine here in the front as high as we can get it you know you guys don't have to go extremely high just get it jacked up in the front end with a jack make sure you are in a ventilated area I uh, I'll raise the garage door when for this next step and um, what we're gonna do is we're gonna bleed the system so we lost a lot of antifreeze and I'm just gonna put in new antifreeze and uh, I'll show you how we bleed the system on this or how you need to bleed the system on this per um, instructions and we'll get that taken care of. So as soon as I get that buttoned up back there, we'll get this, uh, get this machine ready as far as heat. All right, so this is what you're gonna wanna do. Either put it up on a ramp or jack it up like this. Um, this is about five foot tall. This is where I've got this set. Top your radiator off with fluid, 50-50 mix. Make sure this uh, overflow bottle is topped off, which mine is. We're good. We are going to leave the radiator cap off. We are going to jump in the side-by-side. -side and, uh, well, actually, we're not going to jump up in it. We're just going to start it up. Start it up, let it run for a few minutes. Now's the time to go back and check your thermostat, housing for some leaks, see if anything's leaking back here uh, at the thermostat housing. Check all that out. Um, we need to get the air out of this system. So, to do that, we need to get you where you guys can see that. blue is hard to see okay so we want to go to temperature which is right there I'm gonna ease up in here yep okay so we're gonna rev this up and we don't want to see the temperature go above 105 or 205 degrees thermostat should kick on at that point or open up and allow water flow also during this time you may see some antifreeze uh, bubble up out of here that's not a problem as you can see that that's getting air and stuff out of the system that's what we're wanting to do That right there is perfectly normal. About 122 degrees.
and it should drop down. That's 206, 208, 210. Okay. Shut her down. Let the fan run. Help cool off the system. And uh, we'll repeat it after it cools off. I've got this fan on also blowing just so uh, I can tell when that's uh, actually starting to circulate and I know we're getting close but yeah we're climbing as we set here so <clears throat> and it freezes right up at the top I suspect that to go down here shortly just uh, have to repeat the step again there was an air bubble that's the bad part about this. You really you got to make sure every bit of air is out of the system for this to work right. All right, we're finally on uh, try number seven, and I just started feeling heat in the vents, so I know that we uh, will now start bubbling a lot out of here. You can see all those little bubbles coming up out of the radiator. You need to make sure that it's you know that there's no bubbles whatsoever so like i said this is number seven try on filling everything up we'll keep going i'll let you know uh, how things go here but we at least have heat now at the vent okay the fan's getting ready to kick on i've got the uh got the radiator topped off the cap back on this will get up to Maybe another degree, and there it goes. It's falling. Thermostat just opened up. Now, this is a heat gun, blue point heat gun. I've got the vent on. You can see the dock. We're going to go right there, let off, and well, it didn't read it. Let's try it again. Why ain't you reading? There it is, 132 degrees at the heater up top here. 133 degrees out of the vent. That's pretty good, that's pretty hot. So we'll let this thing run for a minute. I wanna show you how good each vent is with all of them open. Okay, I've got all four vents open. I've got the two open there and two down here at the bottom and I'm gonna show you I mean there's plenty of airflow down here I can't even leave the paper up there but yeah plenty of airflow down here at the floor hold it up to the top here plenty of airflow out here you know out of that vent and the same out of this vent as well. This is going to be very nice for the winter time, especially with a closed cab. Uh, this is a great investment. Go ahead and shut the machine down. This is a great investment for your machine. And you know, like I'm going to say in the bit in the beginning, make sure you have enough time to install this. This isn't something that you're going to throw in or throw together in a couple hours. Uh, plan on a day if you're inexperienced um, doing this type of work and want to tackle it. You know, maybe uh, maybe just plan on you know a day and a half to two days, maybe a weekend. Um, but other than that, I mean, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Uh, the firestorm. Uh, uh, heater off of eBay the four port heater works very well and uh, I'll keep you guys updated on this so until next time guys you know thanks for watching and we'll catch you on the next one